Over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to make a fancy feast cat can stove. Now, this is an alcohol stove that is extremely efficient, extremely easy to make, and also extremely inexpensive. It costs about 39 cents for the cat food can, which you can get in any sort of uh, grocery store. A couple dollars for the whole punch. So the first step in making a fancy feast cat can, of course, is to get the cat food out of the can. And then I'm going to wash the can out. So now that I have the cat food out of the cat food can, the first thing I really need to do is take care of this of this edge. Uh, this is a rough edge that could potentially cut you. So just take some sort of hard surface. Um, you know, for example, the hole punch would be just would be perfectly sufficient, and just kind of round out the edge in order to make sure that it's not sharp and can't cut you. Step number three, after we've rounded out the edge, that inside edge, is to take uh, a, some sort of marker. And with this marker, we're going to go ahead and mark um, 16 equally spaced just tick marks around the lip of, of, the, of the can. If you really want to get a uh, very kind of perfectionist, with, you can use some sort of tape measure like a, that you can wrap around the can. I don't think it's that big of a deal to have the marks slightly off. So I usually go ahead and just start by marking on top of the can one point, go across the other side in order to cut the cut the lid and cut the lip in half. Then I might make it quarter marks and then eighths. And then finally I'm going to do sixteenths. And uh, at the end of this step I should have sixteen tick marks around the lip of the can. Now using this t these tick marks, I'm going to go ahead and take my paper hole punch. Now this is a paper hole punch that's a little bit beefier than your standard paper hole punch. Um, the advantage of, a, of having a longer uh, extension like this is that you can get the can, or you can make a hole further down onto the can. Uh, it's not necessary to go this far down. Uh, usually a, a normal paper hole punch would work. You need to be, a, be able to get about three quarters of an inch down over the lip of the can. So using these tick marks, um, I'm going to get, go ahead and start to make holes around the upper, li upper lip of the, of the tin. So the first one, for example, would be right here. And then after I'm done with this first round, I'm going to go ahead and make a second round just below it. I've now finished one round of holes. Uh, I managed to put in about 18 holes um, just below the upper lip of the tin. When you're making these holes, it's important to make them, try to make them equally spaced and also to make sure that they're not too, um, they're not too close to one another. If you make them too close, it's likely that you'll break the tin that's between the two holes and if you do that enough around, you'll compromise the, uh, the strength of the tin and you wouldn't be able to put enough put as much weight on top of the tin with your pot as you'd like to. The next step, that we're, I'm going to make another round of holes. These are going to be offset with the holes above it. Uh, so for example, uh, I'm going to put this, this hole right here and I'm going to put it right in the middle there. And again, I should have about 18 holes by the time I go around. I'm now finished making this alcohol fancy feast cat can stove. As I said in the introduction, this is an extremely easy stove to make, but I haven't found anything that's, um, that's more efficient, that's simpler, that's as inexpensive as this, can, as this stove here. In order to light the stove, you would go ahead and find a, some sort of level surface, ideally something as level as this table. Take some denatured alcohol, pour it right into the top, go ahead and light the alcohol, wait, probably about 10 or 15 seconds for it to kind of heat up. As soon as, it's heat, as soon as it's heated up sufficiently, I would go ahead and take my pot and put my pot right on top of the, cac the stove. And then I would take in a, some sort of windscreen made out of aluminum foil or stainless steel or titanium and go ahead and wrap it right around the, right around the pot. Uh, my, um, my windscreen sits about uh, this high. 
and I keep it, try to keep it about a half an inch from the edge of the pot. And that makes sure that um, the wind not only is blowing heat away, but also that as much fuel, as much of the fuel is being used to transfer heat into the pot and warm up whatever I have inside. Okay, now here's the fun part. So I'll go ahead and have my finished alcohol stove. I'll take my denatured alcohol, go ahead and put it into the top of the stove. I prefer lighting the stove with matches as opposed to a lighter. They're a little bit easier to deal with in terms of putting the flame down to the pot. Go ahead and light it. Now I give it about 10 or 15 seconds to warm up and then once it's warmed up I can go ahead and put my pot right on top of the stove. It's probably warmed up enough at this point. So I can just take my stove put it right over the pot. Now this is about a perfect setup and um, you can see how nicely this pot is sits on top of the on top of the stove. Again if I had had a bigger pot like a two liter pot I probably want to make a larger stove probably out of something like a tuna something like a tuna can but for a one person cook set this three ounce fancy feast can is about as good as it gets.